Hello everyone. A very very good morning to all of you. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me clearly? Let me confirm in a minute so I can start the class ahead. Give me a second to confirm it. Yes, I hope it's working. Give me a minute. I'm just starting the class. Yes. So here I can see your chat also. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if I'm clearly visible audible to you. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here and today I am starting a series of image based question of entire pathology. Now we know that in the you know new pattern of exams, all exams, all competitive exams whether you talk about NEET, PG, FMG, INICT or whether you talk about NEXT. In the latest pattern, in the new pattern, image based question is a new thing. So all the images, pathology is a very vital subject out of the 19 subject from which many, many important image based questions can be created. So you should know all the important and must know images from entire pathology. Basically, you should know all the images of the Robins so that you will be able to crack any question, any image based question based on the any image. So we all know that in pathology, we have three portions to get studied. We have to study general pathology. We have to study hematology and we have to study systemic, systemic pathology. Image based questions are created from all of them. So uh, systemic pathology is the most difficult area most of the students find from which uh, images uh, they think it should be discussed. So I am starting right now with the systemic pathology. I will take one by one multiple systems and discuss the important image based questions. I will take an image and discuss all the important questions that can be created based on that image from systemic pathology. Today we will start with GIT. After GIT we will move on renal system. After that we will move on respiratory system. Then we will move on endocrine system. Likewise we will cover all the systems. We will move on CVS, blood vessels, breast and one by one genital systems MGT, FGT. So it will require 2-3 days to complete entire image based question from complete systemic pathology. After that, we will move on general pathology. In general pathology, also there are two, three chapters, especially inflammation, may say, uh, cell adoption, cell injury, cell death, may say, apoptosis and necrosis. So many image based questions and hemodynamics are created from this. Of course, few from neoplasia also. So I will cover all these one by one. In hematology, I will cover all three areas RBCs, WBCs. So RBCs, my all anemias will come, WBCs, my all leukemias, lymphomas will come and platelet disorders, thrombocytopenia. So I will cover all of them. I will not cover theory. I will cover only image based questions of this. Right. So should I start? Okay. So I am starting right now. I am starting with systemic pathology. In systemic pathology, I am starting with GIT. I guess uh, you will learn a lot in today's lecture. So I'm starting with GIT image based questions. Here is the first question in front of you along with the image. I will show you the image separately also. First read the question. I will show you the image separately. Mark the important findings shown in the image. Then you have to give me answers. Based on this image, four questions can be asked with four, four options. I am not giving you options. I am asking directly the questions. But you should have a thorough concept. Okay. Let me read the question. A 42 year old man is there with a long history of alcohol abuse. The first clue in the question is alcohol abuse. The patient is a chronic drinker, chronic alcoholic drinker, right? He develops hematemesis. What do you mean by hematemesis? Hematemesis means blood in vomiting. He is having blood via vomiting. During vomiting, he is having blood and he is a chronic drinker. And ultimately, extinguishing, extinguishing uh, is there. At autopsy, what do you find? At autopsy, the, the person is dead. At autopsy, you find the averted esophagus show a casual lesion. In another patient, the same area is shown after treatment. Right. So you can see uh, the two diagrams are in front of you. Can you see this, this area? This area was bleeding. It is present where? You see the location where it is present. So the area is present in the esophagus. So in the esophagus, some pathology is there which is causing bleeding. And because of the bleeding, the patient is having hematemesis, hematemesis and the patient is dead because of extensive bleeding. In the second diagram, the same patient is treated. This is the treated, already treated. Now it is not bleeding. 
now you identify what is the pathology now first thing clue, clue given in the question the patient is a alcoholic chronic alcoholic user chronic alcoholic drinker right so it is a big clue given in the question after that the second clue given in the question is that some pathology in the esophagus which is causing bleeding which is causing bleeding now any one of you can identify what is the pathology i want to ask four questions here based on this image what is your diagnosis so some disease in the esophagus which occurs in chronic alcohol alcohol users so what is your diagnosis tell me the name of the disease the most important question which i want to ask based on this image you tell me what is your diagnosis any guess any one of you want to give any guess the second question which i want to ask you first give your diagnosis what is the pathogenesis of that diagnosis why that disease is occurring in a chronic alcoholic drinker you tell me the pathogenesis the third question which i want to ask in this image what liver disease does, does this patient have this patient may be having some liver disease also the esophagus disease is shown in the image but does this patient have some liver disease also and the last question which therapy can be employed in the treatment of this condition this image is shown uh, of the treated treated patient so what is the name of this therapy what is the name of this therapy which is applied over here to stop bleeding does anyone have any guess what is the answer of any of the four question do you know the answer no the first clue given in the question the patient is an alcoholic drinker the chronic alcoholic drinker the, the there is some pathology in the esophagus which is causing bleeding what is the most common differential coming in your mind yes it is esophageal varices can you see the pinpoint here it is a dilated vein it is a dilated vein dilated vein which got ruptured and because of the rupture it start bleeding it start bleeding it is a dilated submucosal vein which got ruptured and start bleeding so the answer is esophagus varices the it, these are the large bleeding varices what is the varice it is a dilated submucosal vein uh, what is the pathology why the veins got dilated in esophagus now these are I, I i am telling you i am saying that these are the dilated veins in the esophagus why the veins in the esophagus are dilated at all because of portal hypertension why this patient develops portal hypertension because the patient is a chronic alcoholic user and he develops cirrhosis in the liver because of the chronic alcoholic user he develops cirrhosis cirrhosis leads to portal hypertension portal hypertension leads to varices and varices is causing bleeding varices is causing bleeding so that is the complete pathogenesis i will explain you why but i will explain you can you see this is the liver this is the liver of a patient uh, who is drinking alcohol chronically liver has two lobes the, the left lobe is smaller the right lobe is larger the two lobes are connected with each other via a ligament the falciparum ligament now liver has dual blood supply if you want to understand portal hypertension you have to understand dual blood supply of the liver give me a thumbs up what is dual blood supply now this is a simplified diagram sketch diagram which i have drawn for you people can you see a beautiful diagram in this diagram can you all see a liver yes this is liver can you see this is liver all organs of the body get pure blood from aorta can you see heart this is the left ventricle of the heart from the left ventricle of the heart pure blood is coming in the aorta and aorta provides pure blood to all of the organ so liver is one of the organ liver also get pure blood via aorta via branch of aorta known as hepatic artery so the first blood supply in the liver is hepatic artery you got my point the first blood supply in the liver is hepatic artery right now all this is the first blood supply right can you see this is git here this is esophagus this is stomach these are the intestines this is the complete git you can see here from the git veins are arising these are the veins of the git all veins of git first go in the liver this is known as portal vein this is the second blood supply of the liver see the two arrows are coming in i will mark both the arrows so this is the portal vein blood coming via portal vein from git this is hepatic artery blood coming via hepatic artery from the left ventricle aorta so that is dual blood supply of the liver both the bloods are coming inside the liver getting mixed here so blood coming from hepatic artery the pure blood the blood coming via portal vein the impure blood from the git both the bloods are entering inside the liver getting mixed supplying the hepatocytes and all the blood is exiting the liver via one 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 uh, vein one blood vessel one vein so name of that vein is hepatic vein hepatic vein or central vein that carries the impure blood out of the liver and it drains in svc ivc and via svc ivc the impure blood from the liver is going in right auricle the right side of the heart give me a thumbs up if you understood the dual blood supply 
everyone give me a thumbs up those who are watching me live please give me a thumbs up you got my point now now apply now th these are the three things the two arteries are the the two blood source are coming and one is leaving out so hepatic artery carrying pure blood to the liver portal vein carrying impure blood to the liver from the git both bloods are coming getting mixed inside and exiting the liver via one vein the name of the vein is hepatic vein or central vein so this is known as dual blood supply of the liver now you must understand one thing here uh the patient is a chronic alcoholic drinker what happens in alcoholic drinker in alcoholic liver drinker the liver undergoes cirrhosis the liver become nodular and entire liver becomes cirrhotic the cirrhotic liver is a non functional liver this liver will become non functional now what will happen this is a non functional liver now so whenever the blood is coming from portal vein from the git this liver is not accepting the blood the blood is not accepted by the liver uh, from the portal vein because the liver is cirrhotic because the patient is alcoholic because of alcohol the liver is cirrhotic because the liver is cirrhotic it is not accepting the blood from the portal vein so blood is accumulating in the portal vein causing portal hypertension that is the reason of portal hypertension in a patient having cirrhosis or chronic alcoholic user so in our question the examiner has given given us a clue that the patient is a alcoholic user chronic alcoholic abuser that's why we can have a guess in chronic alcoholic user the liver may be cirrhotic because of the cirrhotic liver there may be portal hypertension because cirrhotic liver is a non functional liver that's why it is not accepting the blood via portal vein so blood is getting going back in the portal vein it is causing hypertension in the portal vein that is portal hypertension so blood will go in all organs back in all organs back from where it is coming back it is going so blood is going in esophagus also esophagus is one of the portion of git in esophagus we have systemic portal shunts so blood is going back that will cause dilatation of veins that will cause dilatation of veins of the esophagus which is known as varices this is the pathophysiology of varices nobody will teach you with such simplicity in a such beautiful diagram why esophageal varices are formed not only esophageal varices this patient may have hemorrhoids also hemorrhoids means uh, hemorrhoids are also dilated veins these are also dilated veins in the anus so dilated veins can be in the esophagus the dilated veins can be in the anus the dilated veins are due to portal hypertension portal hypertension is due to backflow of the blood in the portal vein the blood is going back because of cirrhosis and cirrhosis is occurring because of alcohol so this is the complete pathophysiology why this patient can have dilated veins in the esophagus which are known as esophageal varices or dilated veins in the anus which are known as hemorrhoids so hemorrhoids and esophageal varices both can result from portal hypertension in a cirrhotic patient and they bleed the esophageal varices also bleed so the blood comes in the vomiting and hemorrhoids also bleed so the blood come in the stools so bleeding is a tendency when the vein is dilated it will get rupture it will get bleed so depending on the location the blood if it is in esophagus it will come in the vomiting if it is in the anus it will come in the stools give me a thumbs up but the pathophysiology of both the varices esophageal varices and anal canal varices anal canal varices are hemorrhoids the pathophysiology is same it is in front of you you got my point you got my point so that is the complete pathophysiology now what treatment you will offer to this patient the main treatment the liver is cirrhotic the problem is that the liver is cirrhotic there is no treatment for cirrhotic liver only treatment is liver transplant you change the liver liver transplant because it is a irreversible disease once the liver undergoes cirrhosis you cannot treat it medically via any medicine only treatment take the dead liver take the cirrhotic liver out and replace it with a new liver from the donor so liver transplant is the only option once you do the liver transplant cirrhosis is not there in the new liver so portal hypertension will not be there and the varices will be reversed but liver transplant is a big surgery the patient may get a donor the patient should be eligible for the surgery not always possible so what treatment you will have to offer to this patient the cure is the liver transplant for bleeding the cure is the liver tr transplant if bleeding is an emergency now the patient is bleeding 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 like anything in our question the patient is dead because of the bleeding right now what is the other treatment you will offer so the dilated vein we will seal the dilated vein we will cause the sealing of the dilated vein the vein is dilated it is ruptured so the rupture ko hum seal kar denge so we will do the sealing with the help of sclerotherapy so the treatment here the temporary treatment here is sclerotherapy but again after some time another vein can dilate because you are not treating the main cause portal hypertension still existing even after sclerotherapy 
so after sclerotherapy temporarily the bleeding from that particular vein which is ruptured is stopped so in this in this exam in this question let me show you the question again so this was my question which i launched you the first question right you can see a man is there who is doing the alcohol abuse after alcohol abuse chronically he is developing hematemesis intractable hematemesis means extensive bleeding in the vomiting extensive bleeding because of which the person is dead now on autopsy i found esophagus is showing a lesion can you see this one this is the lesion present in the esophagus you can see it is bleeding right in another patient now this person is dead but in another patient with the same complaint i have treated the patient with some therapy so what is your diagnosis my diagnosis is esophagus varices what is the pathogenesis who will tell me the pathogenesis because of chronic alcohol abuse the patient develops cirrhosis in the liver cirrhosis in the liver leads to portal hypertension you know the reason now because of the backflow of the blood in the portal vein because of the dual blood supply in the liver portal hypertension causing dilatation of veins of git dilatation dilatation of veins of git because port, portal vein is a vein which is formed from the veins of the git so all the veins in the git will get dilated especially of the esophagus especially of the anus so dilate, dilated veins in the esophagus are known as varices and dilated veins in the anus are known as hemorrhoids so that is the pathophysiology how the disease is occurring in a patient who is doing alcohol abuse you got my point you got that so the pathogenesis you already know which liver disease this patient is having this patient is having cirrhosis in the liver we can understand it because the biggest clue given is the alcohol abuse and what therapies you will give to this patient the best treatment is the liver transplant to cure the disease but if liver transplant is not possible temporarily you can stop the bleeding via via sealing the dilated ruptured vein so sealing is done by sclerotherapy sclerotherapy so in this diagram this is the sclerotherapy shown to you everyone give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up if you got the question correctly give me a thumbs up you got total uh, all the concepts i have told you in this question so can you answer all the questions which are asked in this question okay so you can see this is the liver this is the dual blood supply of the liver beautiful diagram the pure blood is coming via aorta this is aorta aorta is giving pure blood via hepatic artery it is entering the liver and impure blood is coming it is not shown here via portal vein so portal vein yeah this one portal vein so portal vein is giving impure blood from the git this is the second blood supply both the blood will mix here after mixing supplying the hepatocytes they will leave the liver via hepatic vein and hepatic vein will go to the heart the right side of the heart so beautiful diagram showing the same thing right so because of liver cirrhosis increase portal pressure that will lead to formation of varices dilatation of the varices and that will lead to bleeding you got my point so that is the complete thing you can see this is the esophagus in the esophagus can you see the veins are dilated can you see this is a cirrhotic liver the liver is cirrhotic because of the cirrhotic liver this is the portal vein so portal vein the back flow of the blood is there in the portal vein the liver is not accepting the blood from, from portal vein so liver is giving back blood to the portal vein so portal vein is hypertensive hypertension because of which all the veins in the git they are dilated so the veins in the esophagus they are also dilated which are leading to the formation of the varices do you have any doubt in this do you have any doubt in this otherwise give me a thumbs up so gobi others give me a thumbs up if you if you if you got it should i move to the next question this is the next question in front of you let me read the question then we will try to solve it i will show you the image separately also so let me read the question a 59 year old man age is always important in your question age always give you a clue that the disease is occurring in old age young age middle age child so 59 year old male, male is there that is the disease is occurring in old age with a 15 year history of gerd so patient is having chronically a disease gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease gerd recently develops odynophagia what do you mean by odynophagia the prep, the patient is having problem in swallowing the patient cannot swallow the food while swallowing the food the patient is having pain pain while swallowing the food and dysphagia odynophagia and dysphagia that is pain during swallowing and difficulty in swallowing so patient cannot swallow the food with a 6 kg weight loss whenever a sudden weight loss is given it can be some neoplasm it can it is indicating towards some malignancy some neoplasm so it can be not always so 6 kg weight loss suddenly is a significant finding so maybe the examiner is indicating us towards some neoplasm and patient is having difficulty in swallowing and patient is having pre-existing GERD. 
so esophagectomy is done esophagectomy so there is some problem in the esophagus and the surgeon has removed the esophagus so the diagram of esophagectomy is shown to you what kind of neoplasm is shown in the diagram what is the kind of neoplasm what is the precursor lesion in this neoplasm and what is the prognosis can anyone of you answer can anyone of you answer the three questions so yes dr priyanka gobi priya shri anyone of you can answer the three questions what i am asking i am repeating again there is a old man there is a old man having gerd from last 15 years you know gerd gerd is the reflux the acid is coming from the stomach to the esophagus and now suddenly he developed odynophagy and dysphagia suddenly with a 6 kg weight loss so the surgeon found some neoplasm the surgeon have done esophagectomy so the neoplasm is in the esophagus can you see the diagram this is the diagram of the esophagus can you see the esophagus inside the esophagus can you appreciate this nodular area which is marked by the examiner by this dot the black dot it is a nodular area inside the esophagus now you tell me what is the malignancy here what is the ma malignancy samir you are saying squamous dysplasia or adenocarcinoma say one thing samir either it can be squamous or it can be adeno it cannot be both right so we have two types of malignancies in the esophagus samir right we have adenocarcinoma we have squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma also known as epidermoid carcinoma so what is this malignancy based on the clues what are clues given to you in the question the examiner has given there is an old man the first clue the patient is having GERD. The biggest clue here is the patient is having GERD, chronically GERD from last 15 years. It is the biggest clue, right? And after that, now the patient is developing odynophagia, dysphagia. That is indicating there is some problem in the esophagus. And uh, the patient is having sudden weight loss. Sudden weight loss is also indicating some problem in the esophagus. So these two clues are giving us a clue that the problem is there in the esophagus. The patient is having some problem in the esophagus. So some malignancy is there. That image is given to you. And that biggest clue is given in the image. See the diagram. See the diagram of the neoplasm. This is the diagram. So most of you are right now. So Priyanka is saying adenocarcinoma. Samir is also now saying Abhishek is saying adenocarcinoma. You all are right. You all of three are right. Now my question to all of you, why? Why you are saying adeno not squamous? As I have told you in esophagus, there are two type of malignancies. Now, nah? so based on the clues and the diagram, can you can you tell me certain finding which is pointing you towards adeno, not towards squamous? Can you tell me, Priyanka, Samir, Abhishek, any one of you? Can can you tell me? Yes. The biggest finding, the biggest clue here is the GERD. GERD is a risk factor for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus, not squamous cell carcinoma. GERD is a risk factor. Now, can you tell me the name of the precursor lesion? Because of GERD, what will happen? Because of GERD, the patient is having chronically GERD. GERD will lead to something that will lead to adenocarcinoma of the adenocarcinoma of esophagus. Esophagus. Can you tell me the name of this precursor lesion? Can anyone of you can tell me the name of this precursor precursor lesion? Yes, Dr. Priyanka Sami, that's what I'm asking. The GERD leads to what? That will lead to adenocarcinoma. I want to know this missing fill in the blank. So can anyone of you, anyone of you, mucus producing, no, what is the name? There is the exact name. The name here is Barrett esophagus. Come on, GERD leads to Barrett esophagus. You cannot miss this finding. GERD always leads to Barrett esophagus. And Barrett esophagus leads to adenocarcinoma. Barrett esophagus is a risk factor for adeno, not for squamous. For squamous, it is not the risk factor. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I would like to draw a diagram here to explain you the concept. Okay, let me draw the diagram. It will take hardly two minutes. This is the esophagus. Can you see? This is the esophagus and this is the stomach. This is the intestine. What is the lining of the esophagus? The lining of the esophagus is squamous. This is squamous lining. Can you see? With blue color, I am drawing the squamous lining. Uh, the lining of the stomach is columnar. You, you know it. I guess everyone knows it. So the lining of the stomach is columnar. So with red color, I am drawing the columnar. Can you see the junction? This junction is known as squamocolumnar junction. Squamocolumnar junction also known as gastroesophagus junction ge junction gastroesophagus junction or squamocolumnar junction i guess everyone knows that right now where is the acid present in the stomach we all know acid is present in the stomach not in the esophagus this is acid this is acid hcl acid is present so why god has given two different type of lining in the esophagus and the stomach although both of them are continuity why god has provided so there is a reason behind everything so god is changing the lining initially the lining was squamous but as soon as the stomach is start the gastric uh, portion is start the lining become columnar why because columnar epithelia can withhold the acid squamous epithelia cannot withhold the acid right so since stomach contains acid since stomach contains acid 
is it stuck i guess i am visible i guess i am visible and audible uh, is it stuck no i guess it is visible to all of you okay so um, the stomach contains acid so that acid that the columnar epithelia can withhold the stress caused by the acid now in some people gerd occurs what is gerd can anyone define gerd gerd is the reflex gerd is the reflex in the reflex the acid is going into the esophagus so the lower esophageal sphincter is open and the acid is going in the lower esophagus not in entire esophagus only lower portion of the esophagus is exposed to acid so what will happen the lining of the esophagus i have told you the lining is uh, squamous but squamous epithelia cannot withhold acid so what as a part of adaptation what the esophagus will do as a part of adaptation what this esophagus will do so let me draw one more diagram to explain you the concept so this is esophagus and this is stomach so lining of stomach is still same it is columnar it is columnar this is columnar lining there is no change but in the lining of the esophagus the upper esophagus is still is still squamous but the lower esophagus convert into columnar like stomach can you see this portion of the stomach i am interested in this portion of the stomach this portion of the this portion of the esophagus this portion of the esophagus was initially squamous but now get converted into columnar so change in epithelia takes place in lower esophagus in lower esophagus initially it was squamous but now it get converted to columnar because of gerd what is the reason the reason is the gerd so this is the acid it is refluxing back so because of the gerd it is happening so gerd is a precursor now this is known as metaplasia so the squamous squamous epithelia converting to columnar epithelia it is a metaplasia and the disease known as barrett esophagus this is known as barrett esophagus so what is barrett esophagus in barrett esophagus in the lower esophagus squamous epithelia converted to columnar epithelia because of gerd so gerd lead to barrett esophagus so what is the problem in that yes it is a intestinal metaplasia prerna absolutely right yes it is a squamous metaplasia basically it is a metaplasia so this is barrett esophagus now what is the problem now if you talk about me inside my esophagus for a layman inside the esophagus the lower esophagus the lining is squamous or the lining is columnar how does it it is um, you know it is affecting the patient how does it is affecting so if i say to the patient you have a problem in your esophagus the patient will say doctor what is the problem so normal persons esophagus have squamous epithelia but your lower esophagus instead of squamous it is columnar it is converted to columnar so patient will say my doctor how does it matter to me does it matter to me i don't check my lining every day whether it is squamous or columnar inside my lower esophagus so how does it matter to me the disease is the barrett esophagus because the answer is that barrett esophagus is a pre malignant lesion if you don't treat it now if you don't treat it it will get converted into malignancy which malignancy now now there are two types of malignancies in the uh, esophagus so it will lead to adenocarcinoma it will lead to adenocarcinoma and now don't learn it understand the concept there are two types of linings in entire human body two types of mucosa squamous epithelium and columnar epithelium we know that there are two type of epithelium in some organs we have squamous epithelium in human body in some organs we have columnar epithelium in human body of course the organs which have squamous epithelium will have squamous cell carcinoma can have squamous cell carcinoma if if carcinoma is appearing in that particular organ the organs which have columnar epithelia will have adenocarcinoma 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 arises from columnar epithelium and squamous cell carcinoma arises from squamous epithelium so we have two types of malignancies arising from the two types of epithelia now you yourself apply your brain apply your brain apply the concept here and tell me in the lower esophagus what is the lining now what is the lining in barrett esophagus what is the lining initially the lining was squamous but now the lining is not squamous the lining is converted to columnar because of gerd because of gerd in columnar we have adenocarcinoma we don't have squamous as i have told you here here barrett esophagus will lead to adeno it will never lead to squamous now you will never forget now it is a pre malignant condition so you have to counsel the patient to take the treatment first take ppi ppi as a gerd kam hoga so gerd aur mat barne do otherwise more portion more and more portion of the lower esophagus convert into metaplasia so the barrett esophagus will increase so first give ppi for the prevention further so ppi as a gerd will be reduced and no further extension will occur so give ppi give ppi treat gerd treat gerd gerd will lead to barrett esophagus and barrett esophagus will lead to adenocarcinoma and second thing do the biopsy every 6 month every 6 month do the biopsy and see metaplasia is there metaplasia is there the point at which metaplasia convert to dysplasia ask the patient to undergo surgery 
so you don't know at what stage of life it can undergo into adeno means dysplasia is there now it is converting into adenocarcinoma so ask the patient to undergo surgery and get this portion removed from the body because it is dysplastic you got my point so this is the complete story this is the complete story so the summary is that if any patient have chronically GERD that can lead to Barrett esophagus you know the reason why GERD leads to Barrett esophagus Barrett esophagus is a metaplasia in which uh, in lower esophagus it is a disease of lower esophagus in which squamous epithelia and the lower esophagus is converted to columnar epithelia so it is a type of metaplasia that is known as Barrett esophagus Barrett esophagus is a pre-malignant condition in future it will convert Metaplasia convert to dysplasia and dysplasia convert into malignancy. Which malignancy? It will convert to adenocarcinoma. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So this is the pathophysiology behind it. Now read the question. Now read the same question again. You all will be able to answer it. There is an old man. Now esophagus carcinoma occurs in old age. So the age is always a clue, right? So the first clue there is an old man having GERD from last 15 years. From last 15 years, he was having GERD. He was not taking any treatment for the GERD. Usko thoda sa chest burning sensation hota tha, nothing else. So the symptom was not bothersome and patient was not taking any treatment. Now suddenly started developing odinophagia and dysphagia. The problem in swallowing, pain during swallowing. And suddenly 6 kg weight loss. So some malignancy has developed. So the malignancy is in the esophagus. The diagram is shown to you. So can you see this? This is the nodular area shown in the diagram. So what kind of neoplasm it is? It is adenocarcinoma of the esophagus, not squamous. Which, what is the precursor lesion? The precursor lesion is the Barrett esophagus, which arises in lower esophagus because of pre-existing GERD from last 15 years. What is the prognosis? Prognosis is extremely poor. Patient may die within 6 months. Within 6 months. Extremely poor prognosis. Patient can't eat anything now. Right? So that is. Now the other thing, which is one more clue given in the image. In the image, you can see here, it is a nodular area. It is a nodular. Adenocarcinomas are always nodular. Squamous cell carcinomas can be nodular, ulcerative or can be, you know, uh, infiltrative. But adenocarcinomas are always nodular. So, the, the clue given in the image is a nodular area in the lower esophagus. So, that is adenocarcinoma. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got my point? Say yes or no. You got my point? So, that is the answer. So, let me proceed ahead. Let me proceed ahead. Okay, coming to the next question. This is the next question. Now, my some of questions will be based on radiological image. Some of the questions will be on the gross image and some of the questions will be on microscopic image. But all of them are IBQs. Okay, I will show you the image separately also. It is a beautiful question. It is a, uh, you can say it is a spotter. You can say it is a spotter, right? Okay, let me read the question. Let me help you in taking the clues given in the question. Always there are clues in the question. A 66 year old man. So, there is an old man. Clue in the question, there is some disease which is occurring in old age, not in children, right? With a 5 month history of nausea, vomiting and sudden weight loss. 5 months may 5 kg weight loss in old age. Oh my God, it is malignancy. So in old age, old person don't do gymming, jogging, dieting. No, 66 year old man dieting nahi kar hai. Still he is having sudden 5 kg weight loss. So in old age, if sudden weight loss occurs, the first suspicion should be the malignancy. So it is some malignancy, right? Now there is loss of antral rugal folds antral rugal folds are present in stomach you may be knowing the stomach is having rugal folds in the mucosa you know what are rugal folds so in the lining of the stomach it is not continuous the lining of the stomach is like this so there are rugal folds in the entire stomach but they got flattened here they got flattened so there is loss of rugal folds it is always a clue and a four centimeter irregular ulcer is there inside the stomach so there is problem in the stomach there is problem in the stomach. We have taken a biopsy and from the ulcer and biopsy is shown to you. So what all clues given to you? There is an old man. Number one, having sudden weight loss. <laughs> having sudden weight loss. Old man having sudden weight loss and the symptoms are nausea and vomiting. So something related to GIT. Right. In the stomach, the antral folds are lost. Antral rugi are lost. Right. And a 4 centimeter ulcer is present in the stomach. Right. The biopsy from the ulcer is given to you. What is the diagnosis? It is a spotter. Okay. No, it is not Maltoma. Yes, Priyanka, you are right. Uh, you are absolutely right, Priyanka. Okay. Let me give you the clues for those who didn't, didn't identify it. All these are tumor cells. Let me help you what type of tumor it is. So, can you see any of the tumor cell? You pick any of the tumor cell. Any. Whatever of your choice. All of them are tumor cells. See the nucleus. Where is the nucleus? Here is the nucleus. Here is the nucleus. Here is the nucleus. 
here is the nucleus here is the nucleus so what is unique about them i'm marking the nucleus in each of them the nucleus is eccentric it is not central in each of the cell you can see the nucleus is eccentric in all of them so tumor cell with the eccentric nucleus tumor cell with the eccentric nucleus is known as signet cell signet ring carcinoma it is a typical case of signet ring cell carcinoma what do you mean by signet ring signet ring is a diamond ring can you see diamond it is a diamond ring so i have not worn a ring in my hand so diamond ring have a circle with a diamond at the center you can see the diagram it is a signet this the, the, the diamond is known as signet it is known as signet ring you got my point this is signet ring now see the cell the cell in the tumor so this is the cell this is the nucleus this is the cell this is the nucleus this is the cell this is the nucleus so in all the cells you can see it is looking like the tumor cells are looking like signet ring because of eccentric nucleus the nucleus in the tumor cells is eccentric eccentric that's why looking appearance of signet ring such tumor is known as signet ring carcinoma yes because of the eccentric nucleus ha hamza yes it is known as signet ring carcinoma it occurs in git it occurs in any portion of the git it can occur in esophagus it can occur in stomach it can occur intestine may rarely hota but yeah it occurs in intestine also so in git in any portion it occurs basically signet ring carcinoma is a adenocarcinoma it is a adenocarcinoma it is not a squamous cell carcinoma a special form of adenocarcinoma in which the nucleus is shifted to the periphery so this is a tumor cell normally normally the nucleus occurs at the center the nucleus occurs at the center but in this tumor cell mucin production is too much so excessive mucin production in the tumor cell the excessive mucin production in the tumor cell is shifting the nucleus to the periphery so this this converted into signet ring this is known as signet ring cell signet ring cell tumor cell give me a thumbs up it is a type of adenocarcinoma a special type of adenocarcinoma which is having very 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 poor prognosis patient actually die within 6 months so treatment is not very effective and it is it is the you know the irony is that the the pity is that the patient do not survive so it is a very bad thing so signet ring carcinoma occurs in any portion of the git so have you got it so looking at the image it is a spotter all the cell any cell you pick up see the nucleus of that cell the nucleus of that cell is lying at the periphery so it is a typical case of signet ring cell carcinoma which is occurring in the stomach so my answer is signet ring cell carcinoma give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point give associated familial genetic factors tell me the name of the mutation which takes place here tell me the name of the mutation which takes place here which mutation is leading to that the name of the mutation here is hnpcc so hereditary non polyposis colonic cancer syndrome mein ye hota hai in which the name of the mutation is ecadran gene mutation e cadran gene mutation leads to hnpcc in which signet ring carcinoma is one of the thing in the syndrome what dietary approach might reduce the risk of this condition so are there any dietary factors which which predispose this condition or what precautions the patient should take so that this doesn't occur in future what precautions the patient should take so reduce consumption of the smoked food of the barbecued food of the salted food may be helpful right right a diet should be uh, including uh, green leafy vegetables should protect it right and alcohol ingestion also uh, uh, not protected uh, exaggerate the condition antacids also exaggerate the condition so these are the risk factors you should know so let me move to the next question have you got it e cadran the mutation here is e cadran e cadran the question can be asked on the diagnosis question can be asked on the mutation and question can be asked on the prognosis the prognosis is poor coming to the next question the next question is in front of you we have done some questions on esophagus now we are doing some questions on stomach we will move on some questions of intestine so that we will complete all the questions from the git image based question right any question possible on any possible diagnosis any possible pathogenesis the gross image the microscopic image the radiology image i will show you all now this is a radiology image question you all can see this question is radiology image question give me a thumbs up take the clues from the question a 69 year old man is there again old man with a 3 month history sudden history of nausea and abdominal pain upper abdominal pain right sudden 7 kg weight loss so again it is a malignancy because the age is old sudden weight loss is there 7 kg is a significant finding and nausea and upper abdominal pain with 3 months only the ct scan is shown to you so what is your diagnosis in the ct scan in the ct scan can you see this 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 marking 
in the ct scan the red color mark is there this is the pathology examiner always marks the pathology don't search here and there just see just see where is the pathology so what is it what is it what is the pathology first tell me the diagnosis then i will ask the risk factor for this diagnosis then i will ask the prognosis for this diagnosis pehle diagnosis to banao risk factors or prognosis baad mein first tell me what is the diagnosis now the clues given again i am enumerating the clues clues are important the patient is old having sudden weight loss 7 kg weight loss within 3 months and having nausea and vomiting nausea vomiting indicating an upper abdominal pain it is indicating something wrong in the git especially in the stomach so search now what 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 pathology is shown by the red mark what pathology is shown by the red mark here can anyone of you tell me what is the pathology here let me see your chat let me see your chat uh, sakshi cdh1 to baad mein pehle tell me the name of the disease i am not asking the mutation tell me the name of the disease disease kya hai yahan pe okay second way ye organ kya hai what is this organ jiske bahar jiski wall mein ye disease hai this is the wall of this organ this is the wall of this organ which is showing the disease what is that organ what is that organ i am putting a question mark here what is this organ can you tell me what is this organ yes what is this organ yes so this organ there is a clue the lumen is black so it contains air this black thing inside the lumen it contains air so it is some viscous it is some portion from the git it is stomach it is stomach you can see this one is the liver this one is the liver the liver is having a smooth surface it is a normal liver i guess the liver is normal and you can see this one is the vertebra this one is the vertebra please appreciate vertebra here have you got it and these are the intestinal loops right these are the intestinal loops and around the vertebra you can notice the blood vessels the aorta and the um inferior vena cava the aorta and the vena cava you can notice here right these are the blood vessels and these are the ribs you can see these are the ribs right and these are the para uh, ribs muscles are there so ribs so you should understand a normal ct scan isme dikh kya raha hai dikh kya raha hai uh hamza it is not a colon cancer the section i am showing you liver ke paas mein aapko colon nahi dikh raha hai yahan pe liver ke paas mein aapko jo cheez dikh rahi hai this is stomach so this portion is stomach this portion is stomach having air in the lumen having air in the lumen it is a big clue the air in the lumen so the lumen is black the lumen can you appreciate the lumen is black black is air so air in the lumen this is stomach this is stomach and this is the wall of the stomach which is highly thickened i'm sorry this wall of the stomach is highly thickened so what is the diagnosis now some malignancy in which now the patient is having malignancy that is for sure looking at the clues the patient is a old man sudden weight loss sudden weight loss always indicate malignancy along with nausea vomiting abdominal pain so some malignancy in the stomach so name a malignancy in the stomach in which wall become thick the entire wall become thick there is no one nodule एक नोड्यूल नहीं है कि वन एरिया वन फोर सेंटीमीटर थ्री सेंटीमीटर एरिया देयर विच इज विच इज अडर विच इज अल्सरेटिव नो द एंटायर वॉल ऑफ द स्टमक इज थिक सो वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस यस डिफ्यूज गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर समीर नेम इट आई वॉन्ट द नेम यू आर राइट इट इज अ डिफ्यूज गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर देर इज समिक्यूलियर नेम फॉर दिस कंडीशन द डिफ्यूज गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर द गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर इज प्रेजेंट इन द एंटायर वॉल कॉजिंग थिकनिंग ऑफ द एंटायर वॉल द स्टमक इज लुकिंग लाइक अ लेदर बॉटल that stomach is looking like a leather bottle i have given you one more clue what is the diagnosis ab to batao what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is lentis plastica again a spotter lentis plastica you cannot miss this diagnosis lentis plastica so coming on the lentis plastica what is lentis plastica it is a special type of gastric adenocarcinoma in which the wall of the stomach is diffusely thickened wall the entire wall is thickened you will not find one lesion you will not find one lesion so it is like this this is esophagus this is stomach normally normally if it is not lentis plastica you may find one nodular area one ulcerative area inside the stomach right so these are the nodules but in lentis plastica the diagram will be like this so this is the stomach where is the tumor the tumor is present in the entire wall the entire wall will become thickened the entire wall of the stomach will become thickened entire you will not find one area the entire wall is thickened so it is looking like a leather bottle it is looking like a leather bottle can you see it is looking like a leather bottle this is known as leather bottle appearance leather bottle appearance and it is known as lentis plastica give me a thumbs up so the diagnosis is lentis plastica now you know the risk factors of lentis plastica and you know the prognosis prognosis is very poor prognosis is very poor extremely poor less than 10% patients survive after 5 years within 5 years 90% die 
extremely poor diagnosis, right? Even at early stages, the diagnosis is poor, the prognosis is poor. What are the risk factors? The biggest risk factor is H. pylori. H. pylori causing chronic gastritis. H. pylori, along with it, the diet rich in smoked food, salted food, pickled food, nitrates, and smoking. These are the risk factors. We all know that. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So, this is Lentus Plastica, a typical spotter. He said spotters, eh? looking at the image, you should come on the diagnosis, right? Coming on the next case. This is the next case. Again, a spotter. So, okay, let me read it. Clues, bohat sare hai question me. Abundant of clues are given in the question along with the beautiful image. Two images are given to you. One is H &E. You can see this one, the pink and purple. And other, the brown image is always immunohistochemistry. So, some clue in the ISC is also given. Okay, let me read the question first. Let me read the question first. A 55-year-old woman, again, a middle-aged or old woman is there. Take the clues. Having one year history of abdominal pain. Since one year, the female is having abdominal pain and blood in her stools. Occult blood in the stool. So, so, she, so she, the doctor has advised to do a CT scan, abdominal CT scan. On abdominal CT scan, a 5 centimeter mass in the ileum, in the intestine. And now, there is an intestinal tumor. So, there is some tumor in the intestine, which is causing bleeding in the stool and which is causing abdominal pain in an old lady. So, this is the histologically, histology, HNE &E of, the, of the tumor. The HNE &E of the tumor is shown at the top and immunohistochemistry of CD117. It is a marker of what? Don't see the image. If you know CD117, kiska marker, tell me the diagnosis. Can any one of you, yes, Dr. Priyanka, you are absolutely right. So, you should know the image also. I will explain you the image also. I will explain you the image also. But CD117 is a marker of what? You may be knowing the immunohistochemistry markers. Now, the list of immunohistochemistry markers should be at the tip of your tongue. Always should be at the tip of your tongue. So, yes, the correct answer here is just. You should know the list of immunohistochemistry markers. So, in neoplasia, when I teach students neoplasia, I give this list to them. So, what is the immunohistochemistry marker of melanoma? Melanoma ka marker kya hai? What is the immunohistochemistry marker of carcinoma? What is the immunohistochemistry marker of sarcoma? What is the immunohistochemistry marker of GIST? So, there is a big list. I cannot complete it here. Uh, melanoma ka marker hai S100, HMB45 and S100. These two are markers for melanoma. Carcinoma ka marker hai cytokeratin. Any cytokeratin. Cytokeratin 7, cytokeratin, uh, pan cytokeratin, all cytokeratins are there. Sarcoma ka marker hai vimentin and desmin. Vimentin, ye sab clues milenge tumhye question mein. Vimentin and desmin. Cyst ka marker hai CD117. CD117. Lymphoma ka marker kya hai? What is the marker of lymphoma? Lymphoma. What is the marker of lymphoma? Very important question. So, there is one marker which is present in all lymphomas. What is that, that marker? The marker is CD45. CD45 is present in all lymphoma. Now, but the lymphomas are of two types. Now, B cell lymphoma and T cell lymphoma. So, in key markers are alag alag hai. So, if you ask about B cell lymphoma, the marker will be CD20. And if you ask about T cell lymphoma, the marker will be CD3. But CD45 is a marker that is known as common leukocyte common antigen. LCA. CD45 ka dusra naam hai. Leukocyte common antigen. It is present in all lymphoma. Give me a thumbs up. So, these are the basics you should know. In our question, where, where, where is this knowledge is applied? This knowledge is applied here. In our question, the examiner has given, there is some tumor which is positive for CD117. How it is shown? It is shown in the form of the image. Can you see? This is the ISC for CD117. And all the tumor cells, all the tumor cells, these all are tumor cells here in HNE. All of them are picking CD117. That's why all of them become brown. So, whatever tumor cells were present in HNE, they become brown on taking CD117. That's why the tumor is positive for CD117. It is shown in the image. Examiner have not written in the question that CD117 is positive or negative. You yourself see the image and interpret it. So, this is the interpretation. Now, the answer is straightforward gist. What is gist? What is the full form of gist, Dr. Priyanka? What is gist? Gist hota kya hai? What is the full form? Many students even don't know the full form of gist. Gist is gastrointestinal stromal tumor. It is gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Stromal tumor, gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Um, it is arising from submucosa. Okay, let me draw a stomach. So, this is the diagram. This is the diagram of an esophagus. This is the diagram of a stomach. You know, esophagus and stomach have four layers. What are the four layers? Can you tell me? The first layer is the mucosa. Okay, let me draw the mucosa just a second. So, the mucosa in the esophagus is squamous, and the mucosa, oh my god, the diagram is gone. A second, I will draw it again. I want to explain you something. 
What is gist? I want to explain you that. That's why I'm drawing this diagram. You can see the esophagus, the lining of the stomach is columnar. This is the mucosal lining and the lining of the esophagus is squamous. That is the first layer, mucosa. Mucosa mein lining can be different. Mucosa ki baat, the second layer we are having, the second layer we are having is submucosa. So this is the second layer, submucosa. After submucosa, we are having the third layer, muscularis propria. So this one is muscularis propria and the outermost layer, we, uh, we are having the outermost layer as serosa. So this is the serosa. You may be knowing this. Everyone give me a thumbs up. These are the basics. Everyone knows that. But the mucosa is different, right? If I talk about mucosal or epithelial malignancy, please mind my words. If I talk about mucosal or epithelial malignancy, epithelial, not the same lining. One more thing. The same lining continues in intestine also. Let me draw a small portion of intestine. So the same columnar lining is continuing in intestine also. So lining is squamous in esophagus and entire lining from stomach onwards, it is, it is columnar. This is the basic, right? Now, if you talk about epithelial malignancy, the malignancy in the uh, esophagus will be squamous cell carcinoma, right? The malignancy in the stomach or malignancy in the intestine will be adenocarcinoma. That is the epithelial malignancy, which is arising from the lining, which is arising from the epithelial lining. But what about the malignancy which is arising from submucosa, not mucosa. I am talking about submucosa. There are some cells in the submucosa and the mitral plexus of the submucosa which are known as interstitial cells of kajal. These are the interstitial cells of kajal. Interstitial cell of kajal. They are present in submucosa. They become malignant. So they are forming a mass either in the stomach or they are forming a mass either in the intestine. So this is known as gist. This is the pathophysiology of gist. Now say the full form, gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Now you can understand it. Gastrointestinal, it can occur in stomach also, it can occur in intestine also. Gastrointestinal, give me a thumbs up. Stromal, it is not arising from mucosa, it is arising from stroma. Stroma means submucosa, it is a stromal tumor. Give me a thumbs up, everyone give me a thumbs up. So the cells here are spindle shaped. Can you see the cells, the interstitial cells of kajal are spindle shaped cells. And these spindle shaped cells are proliferating and forming a mass. So see the diagram. Have you got it? The image hatam. Have you got it? Everyone give me a thumbs up. So can you see? Can you see? This is the diagram. So all the tumor cells are interstitial cells of kajal. So these all are spindle cells. These all are. And typically these are positive for CD117. So that you can understand. That you can understand. Give me a thumbs up. So what is your diagnosis? The answer is in um, gist. What is the cell of origin? The cell of origin is this. It is known as interstitial cells of kajal. Kajal means C aata hai, not K. Okay. So interstitial cell of kajal which is present in the mitral plexus of the submucosa. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. What treatment you will offer? There is a targeted therapy available for this, for this tumor. Whatever targeted therapy available hai na, un sab pe MCQ aata hai. Targeted therapy kya hai? What is the targeted therapy? The name of the targeted therapy is imitinib. Imitinib. Imitinib is also given in CML. CML. Why it is happening in interstitial cells of kajal, there is ABL-BCR translocation taking place, which is leading to malignancy in these cells, which is leading to gist. So you want to inhibit this mutation, ABL-BCR, ABL-BCR mutation, and that is inhibited by imitinib. So imitinib is a drug of choice or targeted therapy for CML as well as gist. Give me a thumbs up. I tried my best. Give me a thumbs up. So that is the thing. Now imagine this image is coming in your exam and the examiner is asking, Identify the tumor. The first question, tell me the diagnosis. The four options are in front of you. Is it adenocarcinoma? Is it a squamous cell carcinoma? Is it a gist? Is it a lymphoma? The four options are these. So you can easily, it is the easiest question. Looking at the image and ISC, you can easily identify it is not adeno, not squamous, not lymphoma, it is gist. The second question, the examiner can ask on the same image. Image yahi hai, lekin question is changed. So identify the cell of origin. Is it arising from squamous cell? Is it arising from columnar cell? Is it arising from interstitial cells of kajal? Or it is arising from lymphocytes? What is the cell of origin? So since it is a gist, the first thing, it is arising from interstitial cells of kajal. So examiner is asking a double level question. The examiner is not asking the diagnosis. Examiner is asking cell of origin. So cell of origin wahi bata paega jisko diagnosis pata hua. So examiner is judging two questions in one question. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. The third question, the same image. Examiner is not asking the diagnosis. Examiner is not asking the cell of origin. The image is same. Examiner is asking the treatment. So the four options can be in front of you. The various drugs will be given to you. The answer is imitinib. So for reaching treatment, you should know the diagnosis. Everyone give me a thumbs up.
तो मैनी क्वेश्चन कैन बी फ्रेम ऑन द सेम इमेज इमेज यही रहेगा बट आई एम चेंजिंग द क्वेश्चन वन बाय वन एवरी वन गिव मी अम्स अप एवरी वन गिव मी अम्स अप शुड आई प्रोसीड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन अ स्पॉटर I must say it is a spotter. Okay, let me read the question. Then you yourself tell me what is the correct answer. Two weeks, two weeks into a prolonged course of antibiotic for endocarditis, a 38-year-old woman is there. So imagine a 38-year, a middle-aged woman is there. She is having endocarditis. Oh my God, very unfortunate. She is having endocarditis. For endocarditis, she is coming to me and I offered a course of antibiotic. Endocarditis, itis means inflammation. Endocarditis is the infection in the heart. For infection in the heart, I am offering antibiotic because the patient is having infection by the bacteria. The patient can have A B S A B Staphylococcus infection, Streptococcus infection inside the heart. So I offer simply antibiotic. Take the course of antibiotic. I am offering the antibiotic for two weeks. Okay, the patient was all all right, but suddenly after two weeks, suddenly after two weeks, the story changes. The patient, the female, develops severe abdominal pain with distension and diarrhea. So something happened in the intestine. There was a problem in the heart. The the patient was having antibiotics for which I was offering antibiotics. But after taking two weeks of the antibiotic, the heart problem subsided. But now the patient is having severe abdominal pain with abdominal distension and diarrhea. Right? Itna zada severe tha ki the patient is dead. The patient is dead. After that, we have in the autopsy we have performed the autopsy. We have performed the autopsy. In the autopsy, we have taken all the organs out to see what is the cause of death, sudden cause of death. So there is some problem in the small intestine. This is the diagram of the small intestine. Now, what is your diagnosis based on the clue? Now you can see this is small intestine. What is your diagnosis based on the clue? So a female is there. She was having some infection in the body. Infection in the heart. I guess endocarditis is there. For which you have offered a course of antibiotics. A prolonged course of antibiotics. Prolonged for two weeks, three weeks. Prolonged. After that. Patient immediately developed after prolonged course of antibiotic. The patient develops abdominal pain, severe abdominal pain, distension, and diarrhea. And this is the small intestine. So there is some problem in the small intestine. What does it? No, Hamza, it is not a Crohn's disease. See the clues. What is given in question? There is some problem which is occurring in the small intestine because of prolonged course of antibiotic. It is the biggest clue given to you. Biggest clue given to you. Prolonged course of antibiotic की वजह से intestine में क्या होता है? Okay, see the image. There is one more clue in the image. Can you see the image? In the image, this is the image of small intestine, or I guess it is a image of large intestine also. Any intestine can be there. The entire intestine it is open via scissor. Scissor से मैंने intestine को open किया. From inside, you can see entire intestine is having a membranous covering. Can you see a greenish, greenish dull some membrane covering the entire, entire, entire intestine? It is not a clear intestine. It is covered by a membrane. The intestine is covered with a membrane. Now tell me the diagnosis. What is the diagnosis? Yes, Sakshi, you are right. Lavanya, you are right. It is a typical case of pseudo membranous colitis. So it is a typical. Let me teach you. I will. I will teach you everything about it. I will come on the question again. So the diagnosis here is pseudo membranous colitis. It is a condition which occurs in the intestine by a prolonged course of antibiotic. If you are giving a prolonged course of antibiotic to any patient, this can happen. This can happen. Which bacteria is causing it? The bacteria which is not killed by the antibiotic, it is causing it. And what toxin does? I will tell you everything. I will come on all four questions again. Okay. First, understand it. One more question. After that, I will give you the theory. Right. See this question also. See this question also. Then I will explain you everything about pseudomembranous colitis. Let me read this question for you people. A 54-year-old man is there. Okay. Treated for pulmonary abscess. The man is having pulmonary abscess, pus in the lung. Pulmonary abscess means pus inside the lung. So I have given antibiotic to, to the patient. He is having pus inside the lung. So I have offered antibiotic to the patient, nepacillin, clindamycin, and gentamicin for continuous 17 days. So he has taken the complete course of antibiotic because he was having a pulmonary abscess. But suddenly, after taking prolonged course of antibiotic, he developed abdominal pain. He developed fever, diarrhea from the last three days. We have seen the colonic mucosa. It is shown here. Again, the same case. So, patient is having any infection in the body. The last patient was having infection in the heart. This patient is having infection in the lung. For any infection in the body, you are offering antibiotic, a prolonged course of antibiotic to the patient. After the prolonged course of the antibiotic, that that problem is subsided. Just kill the antibiotic there. That problem is subsided. But now, after prolonged course of antibiotic, the patient is developing a new problem: the severe abdominal pain, distension, fever. So there is something wrong with the intestine. So if we see the large intestine of this person, this is the image. Now see the image, beautiful image. In this image, you can realize the entire 
mucosa is covered with a membrane. Can you appreciate this membrane? Can you appreciate the membrane shown here? This is all membrane. So this is typical pseudomembranous colitis. You got my point? You got my point? Okay. Yes, the answer here is pseudomembranous colitis. It is not ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, ischemic bowel disease, amoebiasis. No. The history is matching. The history, clues given in the question along with the image. Both are matching in pseudomembranous colitis. Let me teach you pseudomembranous colitis. Hota kya hai? Then I will come on these questions again. Both questions. I have taught you two questions right now. This one and the next one. I will teach you both again. I will come on the questions. Let me teach you what is pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudomembranous colitis is a disease. It is a condition. It, it is having two names. It is known as pseudomembranous colitis. It is also known as antibiotic associated colitis. Because it is a colitis. Itis means inflammation of the colon. It is a colitis which occurs after antibiotic, prolonged course of antibiotic. Which bacteria causes it? There is a bacteria which is known as Clostridium difficile. It is not Clostridium perfringens. It is not Clostridium tetemi. It is not Clostridium butyricum. It is Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile causes it. That is why it is known as Clostridium difficile colitis. So, see the three names given to it. So, first learn the synonyms. Sino ka matlab eki hai. The three names given to one disease. Learn all the names. You can understand the meaning. Don't learn, just understand the meaning. Why it is known as pseudomembranous colitis? Because a membrane is formed on the surface of the intestine. Why it is known as antibiotic associated, associated colitis? Because this condition occurs after prolonged course of antibiotic. Why it is known as Clostridium difficile colitis? Because it occurs by a bacteria known as Clostridium difficile. It is overgrown in the colon and that is why it is causing it. Give me a thumbs up. Now you can see this is the colon. Inside the colon, humans have two types of bacteria. We have good bacteria inside our colon. We have bad bacteria inside the colon. Normally, if patient don't have any disease, the good bacteria are excelled over the bad ones. The bad ones are the suppressed. They are suppressed by the good one. Good one are more. We have lactobacillus. We have good bacteria in our intestine. We may be knowing that. We may be knowing that. Now, this patient is having some, <coughs> some disease in the body. In the entire body, he is having infection in some portion. Either in the heart, lung, brain, meningitis, pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, endocarditis, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, for which I offered antibiotic to the patient. To treat that condition, I offered a prolonged course of antibiotic to this patient. So that antibiotic has treated that condition in the body. Whatever the condition, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, endocarditis, pulmonary abscess, meningitis, pneumonia, whatever. Both are treat hogai. But that antibiotic killed all the good bacteria in the colon also. Colon have good bacteria. Me also, you also, we all, we all have colon. Inside the colon, we have good bacteria. These bacteria are killed by that antibiotic, right? That is a side effect of that antibiotic. So the bad bacteria will proliferate. They will proliferate. There is no one to stop the, the, these. So they will be overgrown. They will be overgrown. One of the bad bacteria, one of the bad bacteria is Clostridium difficile. Normally, Clostridium difficile cannot grow in colon because the good bacteria will suppress it will suppress it. It cannot grow. It is all it is all grown by the good one. But if I take a course of antibiotic, antibiotic will kill the good bacteria. Antibiotic will not kill this one. Clostridium difficile. So Clostridium difficile will proliferate. It will overgrow. And this Clostridium difficile will secrete a toxin. That toxin is causing necrosis of the wall of the intestine and producing a pseudomembrane. That causes a disease which is known as pseudomembranous colitis. I want thumbs up from everyone. Yes, common cell. The good bacteria are known as common cells. Yes, please. Very good. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So that is the pathophysiology. What is the pathophysiology? It is overgrowth of the Clostridium difficile which is related to hospital stay or prolonged antibiotic therapy. The Clostridium difficile infections usually occurs in old age. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So what problems the patient will have? This patient will have diarrhea, abdominal pain, severe abdominal pain, cramps, tenderness. This patient will have fever. This patient will have pus or mucus in the stool. The stool will have pus. Nausea, dehydration, right? So these are the symptoms will occur in the patient. The pathophysiology, I have already explained you. This patient is having disturbance of the normal flora. The common cells in the bacteria are killed because of antibiotic course. So the Clostridium difficile will colonize and it will secrete toxin. And that toxin will cause damage to the mucosa and producing membrane in the mucosa, right? What are the causes? Although any antibiotic can cause it, but the most common antibiotic, the most common antibiotics are, I will tell you the list, these are the four most common antibiotics which causes pseudomembranous colitis. So, fluoroquinolones, so it can be any proxen, ciproflox, nevoflox, oflox, right, fluoroquinolones, penicillins, like amoxicillin, ampicillin, all penicillins, clindamycin and cephalosporins. So, these are the four main antibiotics which cause this, this disease. So, whenever you are giving these four antibiotics a prolonged course, not a small course, 
a prolonged course due to any condition in the body so be vigilant you are a doctor now you have to be vigilant if after taking the prolonged course of these antibiotics the patient suddenly complains of abdominal pain it can be pseudomembranous colitis so be vigilant be vigilant for your patient right give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so this is the diagram you can see the mucosal surface of the colon here is hyperemic it is red extremely red and it is partially covered by yellowish green membrane yellowish white is known as pseudo membrane it is not a real membrane it is looking like membrane but it is not a real membrane it is a pseudo pseudo means it is false membrane what is false about it if you try to take this out the membrane if you try to uh, uh, scrap this membrane out the membrane cannot be separated it is looking key if you can if you can easily separate it but if you try to do it with the help of a scalpel the membrane cannot be separated rather if you try it it will bleed it will start bleeding so it is not a membrane it is looking like a membrane but it is not a membrane it is an exudate yellow green exudate is there which is looking like membrane and it is caused by clostridium difficile give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so pseudomembranous colitis is a condition it occurs when the bacteria usually clostridium difficile rapidly outgrown by other good bacteria which normally keep them in check now the, the bacteria which keep them in check are killed by the antibiotics now clostridium difficile to forms two type of toxin antrotoxin a and antro uh, cytotoxin toxin a and toxin b that will cause the damage to the mucosa and produce this condition what is the treatment antibiotics say ho raha hai so first discontinue the antibiotic the first thing you have to do discontinue antibiotic discontinuation of the antibiotic is the first thing the patient is having severe diarrhea now give ors give the fluid repletion give electrolyte balance give ors give fluids water right give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up 25% of the cases resolve with this only the just stop antibiotic which is the offending agent and give ors for the diarrhea remaining patient require the first line therapy the first line therapy may learn two drugs metronidazole and vancomycin it is the drug of choice these two are the drug of choice for pseudomembranous colitis so i am done so you tell me the question you tell me a short note on pseudomembranous colitis what is pseudomembranous colitis can you summarize it pseudomembranous colitis is a condition which occurs in the colon inflammation of the mucosa of the colon producing a membrane like exudate on the colon why it is happening it is happening what is the risk factor the risk factor is prolonged course of antibiotic therapy in any patient due to any condition so this prolonged therapy of antibiotic will kill the good bacteria the common cell in the colon so that the bad bacteria will be overgrown one of the bad bacteria is clostridium difficile it will be overgrown it will produce toxin toxin a and b and that will produce exudate in the colon producing pseudomembranous colitis what are the symptoms you already know the name of the symptoms the, the name of the symptoms and what is the treatment the treatment is stop antibiotic give ors therapy and two drugs you have to learn metronidazole and vancomycin are the drug of choice right yes prolonged antibiotic therapy yes very good not necessarily three times samir there is no cut off for that but yeah it is prolonged that's it give me a thumbs up now see the two questions you yourself will realize the answer so see this is the first question i will read the question again you have to tell me four answers the four questions the four options right two week i have given two week prolonged course of antibiotic to a patient who is having endocarditis for endocarditis i have given two week antibiotic therapy to a patient right the female patient she suddenly develop abdominal pain distension diarrhea and she is dead it can be deadly ha huh? on autopsy this is the small uh, this is not small i'm sorry this is large intestine this is the colon of the patient what is your diagnosis the first thing tell me the diagnosis so i guess everyone knows the diagnosis the diagnosis is pseudomembranous colitis so all the clues along with the image compiled together answer is pseudomembranous colitis what what antibiotic can cause it so four types of antibiotics i have told you that can cause it it can be cephalosporins it can be fluoroquinolones it can be penicillins so you should name those antibiotics which bacteria is likely present it is causing the disease the answer is clostridium difficile and what is the name of the toxin it is toxin a and b have you got it so four questions four options based on same image the examiner can ask the diagnosis pseudomembranous colitis or antibiotic associated colitis right antibiotic it can be clindamycin or any other antibiotic right what is the bacteria clostridium difficile what is the toxin it is toxin a and b everyone give me a thumbs up everyone the same question with the little bit change in the history so instead of endocarditis this time the patient is having pulmonary abscess because of which again a prolonged course of clindamycin gentamicin and napicillin is a penicillin it is given for prolonged course 17 days so patient is developing the same condition i want thumbs up from everyone so it is a spotter pseudomembranous colitis bahut aata hai exam mein it is a spotter looking at the history history is very typical 
प्रोलॉन्ग कोर्स ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक होगा राइट एग्जामिनर कैन आस्क द ट्रीटमेंट ऑल्सो ये पांच छोड़ो एग्जामिनर गिव सेम क्वेश्चन सेम इमेज एग्जामिनर आस द ट्रीटमेंट वॉट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इज इट मेट्रोनेडोजोल इज इट पैनिसिलिन पैनिसिलिन से तो हो रहा है इज इट क्लिंडामाइसिन क्लिंडामाइसिन से तो हो रहा है इज इट सिपेलोस्पोरिन सिपेलोस्पोरिन से भी हो रहा है सो यू कॉन्ट ऑफर पैनिसिलिन क्लिंडामाइसिन एंड सिपेलोस्पोरिन यू हैव टू ऑफर मेट्रोनेडोजोल so metronidazole or vancomycin is a drug of choice now you yourself imagine based on this image how many questions can be asked the simplest will be the diagnosis which is this question the simplest is the diagnosis after diagnosis the patient, the examiner can ask the treatment the examiner can ask the pathophysiology the examiner can ask the name of the bacteria the examiner can ask the name of the toxin so any question can be asked you, the name of the antibiotics which cause it the name of the antibiotics which treat it so you have you should know everything everyone give me a thumbs up first You got my point. Coming to the next question, the next image-based question. So again, it is, ah, uh, okay, it is, it is a radiological image-based question. I will read it for you. See, the young, young lady is there. A twenty-two-year-old young lady, young women coming in the clinic with severe nausea. She is having vomiting and peri-umbilical pain one day since one day. It is so. It is an emergency. It is very acute condition. the duration since the symptoms are present the onset of the disease is very important if the disease is present within days it is acute if the disease is present within 2 3 months it is sub acute if it, if disease is present from years it is chronic so always take clues from the question young lady coming with nausea and peri umbilical pain since one day it is a acute condition before hospital admission the pain is now in her right lower quadrant you know we divide the abdomen into nine quadrants this is the abdomen this is the umbilicus i guess you may be knowing the nine quadrant in in physiology in, in it may be taught to you in anatomy physiology it may be taught to you in first year of mbbs so you may be knowing the name so this is the right side of the patient this is the left side of the patient this, so patient is initially the pain was here in peri umbilical region but now the patient is having complaining severe pain here in the right lower quadrant which organ lies here tell me anatomically yahan pe hota kya hai right lower quadrant mein kaun sa organ hota hai So yes, most of you are right. Which organ lies here? Here we have appendix. So the first clue given in the question is the right lower quadrant. Examiner not directly giving you the patient is having appendicitis. Examiner is giving you a clue the patient is having pain in the right lower quadrant. Severe pain, sudden, one day onset. You may have seen the patient of acute appendicitis. This is the typical history, right? And she is having rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness. Okay, you may be knowing the meaning of that. The CT is shown to you. What is the CT? okay can you see the ct the two marks are shown to you in the ct can you see uh, what is this this structure can you identify the first red mark two red marks this one and this one is shown to you can you identify this structure this is a luminated organ and this is the wall so what is this small structure so some luminated organ is there looking a circle maybe it is intestine but it is very small the the lumen contain contrast normally lumen contain air black in color but currently i have given contrast before the ct before ct i have given the contrast the white color inside the lumen is the contrast so it is a luminated it is not a hollow organ it is a luminated organ it is a luminated organ give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you can appreciate the vertebra here this one is the vertebral column one of the vertebra these muscles are the para vertebral muscles these are the para vertebral muscles you can see you can understand the complete ct samajh mein aana chahiye what are all these structures what are all these structures these all structures are the loops of the intestine containing contrast 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 in sab ke andar contrast hai everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point yes or no so what is this structure this one this structure yes so it is in right lower quadrant it is appendix it is appendix see the wall of the appendix the wall of the appendix is thickened it is a case of acute appendicitis and around the appendix can you see this this portion around the appendix what is all this what is all this around the appendix ye ye appendix ke around kya ho gaya hai it is exudate which is collecting in the uh, mesentery in the appendix so let me read the question what is the diagnosis what ct changes can be seen and what are the complications that perforation can be the complication if you don't treat it it will it will undergo perforation right yes the appendix is inflamed that's why the wall is the wall is thickened so my diagnosis is acute appendicitis since the patient is having the complete history since one day so everything is fitting the patient is having nausea vomiting severe pain in right lower quadrant the anatomy is important right lower quadrant right since one day it is a typical case of acute appendicitis everything is fitting in the history looking at the image the wall of the appendix is thickened i can see the wall the wall of the appendix is thickened 
it is also fitting in the diagnosis. So my diagnosis is acute appendicitis. One of the arrow is showing enlarged appendix, enlarged appendix with thick wall. The second arrow is showing inflammatory strandings, the exudate around it in the adipose tissue. In the mesentery, this is the exudate around the appendix. Normally, it is if you do your CT right now, you will not get this. This the you will the wall is not that thick. Appendix is not having such a thick wall. Here, the wall is more thick. Number one and number two, around the wall of the appendix, I can see the inflammatory strandings in the mesentery of the appendix. So that is typical finding in acute appendicitis. It can lead to peritonitis. It can lead to rupture. If you it, so, it is an emergency. You may have seen emergency may surgeon operates this patient and take the inflamed appendix out. If you don't operate it now, the appendix will rupture. Once the appendix will rupture, all the thing will come here in the free space and it can cause sepsis. Rupture can lead to peritonitis. Everything will come in the peritoneum. Peritoneum inflammation will be there and sepsis will be there. That can be the combination. That can be the complication. Give me a thumbs up. So giving this image, examiner can frame multiple questions in front of you. Examiner simply can ask what is the diagnosis? He can ask what is what is the CT change shown here? What are the complications of this condition? Or another questions can also be created based on this. Actually, you should know how to approach the image. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Should I proceed to the next question? I must proceed. So this is the next question in front of you. A uh, easy one. I guess it is a easy question. Let me read the question for you. Let me first read the question for you. You can see the image also. Okay. A 24 year, again a young, 24 year old man experienced suddenly lower abdominal pain from past one day. Ekhi then say sudden lower abdominal pain. When examined in emergency, severe abdominal pain. So he can't bear. So the patient is in examination room. Palpation of the abdomen reveal no masses. He don't have any mass inside the abdomen. Bowel sounds are still present. Bowel sounds are good. They are present. He is having pain more localized in the lower, right lower quadrant. The same quadrant. It is right lower quadrant me first pain hai, Along with rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness always happens in acute appendicitis. Right. His total WBC count is elevated. You have performed a CBC. CBC me WBC count is left, elevated with left shift. Left, with left shift. You have immediately performed the surgery. You are a surgeon and you have performed the surgery. You have done a laparoscopy. In the laparoscopy, this is the specimen. It is not written here what is this organ. You yourself identify what is the organ. So this is the specimen. So which is the most common condition which is present in this? So is it a granulomatous inflammation? Is it an infiltrating adenocarcinoma? Is it a chronic mucosal inflammation? Is it coagulative necrosis or is it an acute inflammation? So organ in the diagram is appendix. You can identify this. This is the appendix, the long appendix. It is fitting with the right lower quadrant pain also with rebound tenderness, right? So appendix is having acute appendicitis. So answer is E here. You all are right. The correct answer is E. So any question can be framed. You know, the, the history is same. Only thing I have changed the image. Instead of giving you a CT scan, which was given in the last, the CT scan, I am giving you a gross image. So this image is gross. The same history, the same question. Thoda bot many change kar diya question. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So this is appendix. You can see in this appendix, the wall is thickened. The appendix is reddish congested in color. So it is a case of acute appendicitis. Acute appendicitis. Give me a thumbs up. So what is acute appendicitis? Huh. Appendix is a vestigial organ. Do you agree? You agree? Yeah. Now you all are agree. It is a vestigial organ. But if you are a surgeon in future, now nah, it is not a vestigial for, organ for you. It is organ for your earning. Most of the surgeons earn from acute appendicitis cases only by doing surgeries of such patient. So it is a propensity for inflammation. It is having a surgical importance, right? It is the most common cause of acute abdomen in young adults. Usually a young 20 to 30 year patient with sudden acute abdomen, unbearable pain in the abdomen. The first diagnosis is acute in, acute appendicitis. The first differential is, right? Now, there are various positions of the appendix. You may be knowing it can be pelvic, parathecal, subsecal, perilial, postilial, uh, and most common it is retrocecal. You may have studied this ana in anatomy. You can see the various positions of the appendix. Various persons have various positions. Most commonly, it is retroperitoneal. It is retroperitoneal. Uh, retrocecal, I'm sorry. Most commonly, this is the retrocecal position. Most commonly, this is the position. Other positions can also be there. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, why acute appendicitis occur? The person who eat low fiber in the diet. They don't eat fruits. They don't eat fiber. The person who is having stones inside the, inside the stools. The person who is having stricture. The person who is having worms. The parasitic infection. The person who is having some cancers or viral infection. These are the risk factors for acute appendicitis. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So can you see the appendix is inflamed here. 
because of the obstruction by the stone or something it is inflamed it is inflamed it is inflamed and the wall is thickened appreciate the wall thickness appreciate the wall thickness severe abdominal pain hoga patient ko now because of the obstruction here there is increased pressure inside increased pressure will lead to severe pain acute appendicitis give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so that is acute appendicitis if you don't treat it it will undergo gangrenous appendicitis and it will rupture and it will result in peritonitis so can you see it is lower right lower right quadrant appreciate right lower quadrant this is right side of the patient this is left side of the patient you can make it out this is right lower quadrant so typical quadrant is right lower quadrant pain this is typical complaint can you see this is the appendix it is inflamed right so it is present in right lower quadrant right uh, okay bacteriology most common bacteria bacteria fragilis causes acute appendicitis so these are the list of the bacteria which causes uh, acute appendicitis right clinical features patient have peri umbilical pain which gradually shifts shift the pain to right lower quadrant pehle peri umbilical se shuru hoga so this is the abdomen this is the umbilicus these are the nine quadrants these are the nine quadrants so patient start complaining that i am having pain here and gradually the pain shifts here so this is a typical complaint in 50% of the patient anorexia loss of appetite nausea vomiting so these are the typical patient and pain is very 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 severe unbearable pain give me a thumbs up so patient is having severe unbearable pain vomiting loss of appetite no patient don't eat anything abdominal fullness bloating pain in the right lower quadrant see it is right lower quadrant patient have diarrhea and patient have fever everyone give me a thumbs up these are the symptoms everyone give me a thumbs up everyone everyone so symptoms i have already taught you the signs you may be knowing the signs uh, okay so you can see here the pain is there uh, what is rebound tenderness again and again in the question i taught you about the rebound tenderness rebound tenderness kya hota hai the patient is having inflamed inflamed appendix which is present here in the right lower quadrant so if you palpate on the left side if you palpate here on the left side the patient have pain on the right side this is rebound tenderness so you are palpating here giving pressure here but on giving pressure here patient don't have pain here patient have pain here this is known as rebound tenderness it is typical for acute appendicitis give me a thumbs up so this is known as mac burney's point mac burney's point you may be knowing that what is mac burney's point exact mac burney's point pe patient ko severe pain hoga you start palpating the patient from from uh, umbilicus till uh, lower abdominal quadrant exact point i don't know on the pelvis you start palpating so yahan pe midway mein patient ko kahin pe severe tenderness hoga this is mac burney's point you may be knowing that everyone give me a thumbs up what investigations you will offer to this patient before doing surgery to become sure that it is a typical case of uh, acute appendicitis you do scoring there are two types of scoring the most important scoring is elbow rado score you do elbow rado score right you see the three symptoms whether rif pain is present yes or no if it is present give one one score whether anorexia present yes or no if present give one score nausea vomiting one score based on the symptom you give score you see sign rif tenderness rif pain alag hai tenderness alag hai pain is a symptom tenderness is a sign you may be knowing that right rif tenderness ko two score hai rebound tenderness ko one score hai fever is one score leukocytosis means wbc increased in the cbc it is having two score and shift to left towards neutrophil it is having one score so count them total 10 10 में से पेशेंट को कितना होगा इफ 10 में से पेशेंट इज हैविंग मोर देन 7 इट इज स्ट्रांगली अ केस ऑफ एक्यूट अपेंडिसाइटिस इफ इट इज 5 टू 6 इट इज इक्विवोकल लेस देन 4 इट इज नॉट एक्यूट अपेंडिसाइटिस इट इज समथिंग एल्स सो डू द स्कोरिंग इन ऑल योर पेशेंट व्हेन एवर एनी पेशेंट कमिंग टू यू अ यंग पेशेंट विद सीवियर एब्डोमिनल पेन आस्क ऑल दीस पॉइंट्स सी सी द सिम्टम्स सी द साइंस एंड डू द एग्जामिनेशन लेबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस डू द स्कोरिंग 10 में से कितना स्कोर बन रहा है अगर 10 में से स्कोर आइदर 7 8 9 10 ho raha hai so it is a strong case of acute appendicitis operate the patient but less than 7 5 or 6 are out of the 10 so it is equivocal it can be there it cannot be there but less than 5 it is not there it is not there give me a thumbs up give me there is one more score scoring which is known as uh, zanecki scoring so related to usme kuch alag feature nahi hai yahan pe total score 15 hai so i am not teaching you that the best is to do a ct scan ct scan pe you will get a target sign or a hello sign which i have shown you in the diagram i have shown you the ct scan now so the center is there and a thick wall is there so it is it is looking like a target or hello sign right uh, the appendix is distended having a diameter of 7 mm more than 7 mm you can do a usg scan also you can do plain x ray also 
and lab examination we do wbc count right and that's it that's it okay after diagnosis okay so i'm done with this question also everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone means everyone those who are watching me live please give me a thumbs up so we are discussing the image based question of entire systemic pathology i will continue my lecture give me a break of 10 minutes after 10 minutes i am continuing episode 2 of the same lecture thank you very much for being with me for this lecture don't go anywhere just after 10 minutes i will continue my lecture i will continue my lecture at 9:30 at 9:30 am sharp after 10 minutes i will continue ibqs episode 2 of entire pathology general plus hemat plus systemic we will continue with git immediately after git in the next lecture i am going to teach you renal pathology so most of the questions will be from renal pathology in my next lecture okay there are few announcements for you uh, on an academy learners app after youtube please go on an academy learners app install an academy learners app from the play store if you are a newcomer if you don't have the app install the an academy learners app from play store after installing select the category as neat pg select the goal as neat pg that is for medicos right search my name under educators my name is dr priyanka sachdev see the spelling Dr. Priyanka Sachdev, you will get my profile link along with the name. Please follow that profile link. What is the advantage of following my profile link? What is the advantage? There are two advantages. Number one, you will get notifications of all my free classes. So I teach patho, pharma, micro, medicine, PSM, you know, many multiple subjects, important topics in all those subjects. So you will get notification of all my free classes, number one. And I have already taken more than 500 free classes. So you can get the recordings. You can get a list of recordings of all 500 free recordings available on the app. You can watch any recording of your choice. You can, you can download the PDF of the notes of your choice that is available on the app. Everything is free. Everything is free. The only thing you require a code to unlock it. So the code is my surname Sachdev. S-A-C-H-D-E-V Sachdev 10 is the code. Note down the code. It is S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Such they've done as a code. You can utilize this code for watching any recording and downloading any PDF free from the Unacademy app. So why don't you try right now and ask your friends, colleagues, all medicals throughout the world to do so. So that they can get benefit of the free knowledge available on the Unacademy. Right. There is one more announcement by the team. Unacademy conduct free test every month. So this is the schedule for the free test for the month of uh, April on 28th, 29th, 30th April, we are having these tests. I want everyone to participate in the test so that you can you can get your All India rank. The tests are absolutely free. You can participate in them using the same code, Sachdev10. If code is asked, apply the code Sachdev10 and participate in the test. Right. All India mock test, NEET PG 2022 is going to be conducted on an academy on 1st May 9 a.m. Set your reminders right now. I want everyone to participate in the test. You want to know your All India rank. It is a prediction of All India rank. So please everyone participate and see what where you are standing. Again, use the same code to participate in the test. The test is free. The code is such they've done. Everywhere the code is same. Now, the best thing is that if you take an academy, any uh, subscription, the paid subscription, plus iconic, light, any subscription, instead of 10% discount, you will get 20% discount if you apply my code. The offer is valid from 25th to 28th April. So fast, be fast, be hurry, be fast. Don't waste this opportunity. If you are thinking, planning to take subscription ahead, take it today only. Because this offer will not come later on. Instead of 10% discount, you are getting 20% discount on applying my code Suchdev10. So please note down the code Suchdev10. So what types of subscriptions are available on an academy? In plus subscription, these are the offers. In iconic subscriptions, these are the offers. In light subscription, these are the offers. In MBPS Prof. 1 subscription, these are the offers. In plus, you will get only an academy. In iconic, along with an academy, you will get preparator also. In light subscription, you will get only test series. In MBPS Prof. 1, you will get anatomy, uh, physiology, and um, biochemistry. So, uh, only first prof subjects batches. Right. So, the various plans, durations is present in front of you. Whatever of your choice, you can take that plan. Notice one thing. Longer the plan, cheaper it is. So I advise you to take a four year, three year, two year plan in all the plans. So it will be more cost effective to you per month wise. Otherwise, it's your wish, whatever the smallest plan as small as two months is also available. So you can take any plan of your choice. But the thing is that before purchasing any plan, before payment, apply the code such Dave 10 if you want to get 20% discount instead of 10% discount. So please use the code and note down the code and distribute it. Help me in distributing to all the medicals throughout the world, your seniors, juniors, batchmates, interns, everyone throughout the globe. 
please distribute the code. The code is useful for all students. S A C H D E V. I want every medical student to know about this code. The code is useful for all students. Whether you want to watch only free classes, do not want to take paid subscription, or you want to take the paid subscription, the plus iconic one. If you want to watch only free classes, so the code is useful for unlocking the free classes and unlocking the free notes. If you want to take the paid subscription, plus iconic light subscription, so you will get discount, maximum discount if you apply this code before payment. So code is anyhow useful for you, whether you want to take subscription or whether you want to watch it live. So please help me today only. You will distribute this code on your batch groups, right? So thank you very much for being with me. Join me back after 10 minutes. After a cup of coffee, I will come back and join again episode 2 of IBQs and continue with renal pathology now. Bye-bye for this lecture. Thank you.